Hi there and welcome to Messy Church and uh, we're really pleased to have you with us if you're joining us on your computer or on your phone. Uh, we're sorry that we're not here in person but we hope you can have a great time at Messy Church anyway. And as we always start our Messy Church with our theme tune, our song uh, that we sing every week, we're going to do that this week as well. So do sing along. Alan's put some fantastic lighting up in his music room and is going to sing through Our God is a Great Big God. So make sure that you're doing all the actions at home and join in with us. One, two, three, four. God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. He holds us in His hand. He's higher than skyscraper and deeper than a submarine. It's wider than the universe beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing Well done, that was fantastic singing. We hope you were singing nice and loud at home. Well, it's coming up to Easter time and this is the special Easter Thursday edition of Messy Church. And uh, so we're gonna uh, think a little bit about the Easter story or about a little part of the Easter story today. Uh, and maybe uh, you are missing your friends this Easter. This Easter is a bit different, isn't it? Maybe you've really missed your friends at school, maybe you've missed your friends going outside to play and maybe you're hoping that even though you haven't seen your friends you might still get one of these. This was delivered to me and Alan by a very special friend on his bike and we're going to enjoy it on Easter Sunday but maybe you're hoping you're going to get one of those. Well, do you know, sometimes when we think about friends, we sometimes call them, if they're a really good friend and they deliver something like this, we might say that they are a good egg. If someone says you're a good egg, it means they think you are a really, really good friend. But if you're not such a good friend, they might say that you're a bad egg. Well, Jesus had a group of friends and most of them were good eggs, but not all. One friend at least turned out to not be a very good egg at all. 
Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends and he thought he really was a very, very good egg. When Jesus looked as though he was going to get into trouble, Peter said to him, I will fight for you, Jesus. I will never leave you. I will even die for you. Sounds like a pretty good egg, doesn't it? But Jesus was not convinced. In fact, he said to Peter, before the cock crows tonight and in the morning, you will actually say to someone three times that you don't even know me, let alone that you are my best friend and a good egg. Well, on Easter Thursday, the day we're celebrating today, after Jesus had had his special supper with his friends, he was feeling very sad because he knew that it wasn't going to be long before he was going to have to die. And so they all went in the middle of the night to the favourite garden where Jesus used to go with his friends to pray. And Jesus was very upset. He knew that he hadn't got long to go before things started to turn really nasty. And all he wanted were for his friends to be with him. All of a sudden, one of Jesus' friends turns up in the middle of the night in the garden with a whole group of soldiers. This friend, Judas, had come with the soldiers to show them exactly where Jesus would be. He was a bad egg. He went straight up to Jesus and gave him a kiss and showed all the soldiers which one Jesus was. Now, you might think at this point that Peter, who was such a good egg, was about to come into his own, but I'm afraid he didn't. As soon as the soldiers arrived, all of Jesus' friends ran away. They were really, really scared. And I can't say I blame them too much for that, really. Well, Jesus was taken to the high priest's house and the soldiers were being really nasty to him there. And Peter did at least follow Jesus to see what was happening. Peter decides to hang around outside in the courtyard while Jesus is being um, really, really roughed up by these soldiers. And he's warming his hands by the fire just outside where all this is happening. And someone says to him, Oi, I recognise you. Aren't you one of Jesus' friends? And Peter says, no, 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 you've got the wrong person. It's not me at all. I'm not one of his friends. I don't know him at all. And then someone else asks him the same question. And he says, no, 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 I don't know him. I don't know him, even though Jesus was only next door. And then finally, a little girl who was sitting by the fire said, I'm sure I've seen you and you sound as though you come from the same place as Jesus. I'm sure you're a friend of Jesus. And Peter was so frightened that he said straight away, no, I've never, ever been a friend of Jesus. And at that moment, the cockerel crowed three times and Jesus turned round to look at Peter and gave him such a sad look because he knew that Peter had been a bad egg of a friend. He had let Jesus down. And the Bible tells us that Peter was so sad and so upset that he, he turned into a bad egg of a friend that he ran outside and he cried. Now fortunately that is not the end of the story and we know at Easter don't we that, that Jesus having a terrible time isn't the end of the story either because although Jesus did die on Easter Sunday morning, he came alive again. And you might think that he would not want to be friends with someone who had been such a bad egg and let him down. But you would be wrong. Because actually, when Jesus met with Peter after he'd become alive again, he sought him out and he forgave him. And not only did he forgive him, but he told him, Peter, you are going to be a really, really good egg. You are going to be the friend who looks after my church and who I can rely on. He completely forgave him. 
And that is really good news for us, isn't it? Because even though sometimes we might be a bit of a bad egg and not be all that Jesus wants us to be, we know that he will forgive us and that he will turn us into a good egg if we will let him. Well, we're going to see some fantastic science with Dr. Dave now, all about eggs. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Messy Church to Science at Home with me, Dr. Dave. I hope you've been enjoying the science experiments we've done so far. And today we've got a very special Easter science experiment involving eggs. I, but before we begin, I want to introduce you to a special friend and guest who's with me today. I'll just go and get her. Here we go. This is our special friend and guest today. This is uh, Killy, the uh, Kiwi, the Messy Church Kiwi, all the way from New Zealand. Uh, Killy came back to the UK with me uh, just over a month ago when I was travelling over there to uh, teach Messy Church to Science to the New Zealand Messy Churches on North Island in Rotorua and on South Island in Christchurch. And uh, Kili uh, just wants to say hello to the Messy Church Kiwis over in New Zealand, uh, Oscar and Ollie, and also her friend Olivia, who's uh, now living in Australia. So uh, say hello, Kili. There we go. And uh, Kili's going to be around as we do this experiment today, so watch out for her. I'm sure she's got very good eyesight because they come out at night, Kiwi birds. So I'm sure she's got very good eyesight, which is going to help her do the observations in this experiment. Now for this experiment, you will need two eggs. Egg one and egg two. And one of them needs to be hard boiled, but you shouldn't know which one it is because we're gonna try and find out which one is hard boiled. So perhaps you can get one of your grown-ups or somebody in the house who's allowed to boil water on the stove and cook you a hard boiled egg and then give it to you without telling you which one is hard boiled and which one is raw. Because one of these is hard boiled and the other one is raw. So let's get on with the experiment extraordinary. For our final test, we're going to take our egg Put it on the work surface and give it a spin. Well, egg number one spins really well. So let's try and see what happens if I can try and stop it with my finger. If I stop it with my finger, even though it was spinning very quickly, egg number one stops spinning. Let's see what happens with egg number two. Well, it won't spin as easily as egg number one. And when I stop it, it keeps on spinning. It keeps on spinning. Let's try it one more time. Because in science, we sometimes have to do things several times to see if they agree with one another each time. If I stop it with my finger, it keeps on spinning. So there we have a difference between egg number one and egg number two. One spins easily and will stop spinning when I touch it, whereas egg number two won't spin as easily and then continues to spin once I stop it. Maybe that tells us something about which egg is hard boiled and which egg is soft boiled. So at the end of our testing, let's find out which of these eggs is hard boiled and which is then is raw. So we'll take egg number one and I'll try and break it into this glass. Oh, well, egg number one is the egg that was hard boiled. 
That was the egg that sank to the bottom of the water that could easily spin but stopped when I touched it. So that egg is hard boiled. And egg number two, shall we see if it's raw? There we go. Egg number two was the raw egg. That was the egg that sat on its bottom in the water. And although it was harder to spin, when I stopped spinning it, it went round and round and round. Have a think why the fact that one is hard boiled and the other is raw makes a difference to how these eggs behave in the water and when we spin them on the work surface. Remember, if we spin egg one, it spins very easily. But if I stop it with my finger, it stops. And that's because it's solid all the way through. So when I spin it, all of the egg starts to spin at the same time. But if I stop it, the shell, then all of the eggs stop spinning too. Whereas egg two is more difficult to spin because it's not solid all the way through, it's filled with liquid and therefore it takes time for the liquid to start spinning inside. And when I stop it, even though the shell stops, the rest of the fluid inside is still spinning and so it stops, starts the egg spinning again. We give eggs at Easter to remind us of the life that God wants to give us in Jesus. Jesus came to give life and life to the full, a life full of energy, a life full of God's love. But some people didn't want God's life. They decided they just liked life as it was. And so they decided they'd stop Jesus. And on Good Friday, they took Jesus and put him on a cross and lifted him up high and he died. But they should have known that you can't stop God's full and loving life. It goes on and on and on. Because after Jesus had been in the tomb for three days, God brought him back to life again. For nothing can stop God's life. Maybe you think that life's not as full as it used to be. Maybe there are things in your life which have stopped. Maybe there are things in your life which you have made stop because you haven't been loving and you haven't been living life God the way God wanted you to. So we say, God, we are sorry. We're sorry when we stop your life and when we stop your life in others. Please forgive us and help us to have your life 
life which never stops, life which can never be stopped, life which keeps on going because you raised Jesus from the dead at Easter time. And we thank you and ask that you would give us your new life this Easter and every Easter. A life that keeps on going on and on. Thank you. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that extraordinary experiment, our special experiment for Easter. And it's reminded you that what Easter's about, that even though things seem to come to an end, God's life never ends and keeps going on. And that's the life we can trust in because he sent Jesus to be with us and he raised Jesus from the dead. I hope you've ex enjoyed exploring this experiment with our eggs today. And uh, from myself, and from Killy, we just want to say goodbye to you today and uh, we hope you'll come back and join us again soon for some more experimenting with Messy Church of Science at home, exploring the wonder of creation and the wonder of the creator. Right, well, it wouldn't be Messy Church without us doing a messy craft. And this time at Messy Church, Easter Messy Church, we are going to make a cockerel, just like the one that crowed three times after Peter had denied Jesus and was a bad egg. And it's very easy to make. That's an amazing cockerel. It is. I'm glad you like it. All you need is a toilet roll. Now, you might There's be thinking... Yes, this is not a good time to look for toilet rolls, but we all need them. If you haven't got a toilet roll, you can use one of the rolls that's inside a kitchen roll, or you can just use a cardboard box, a cereal box or something, and turn it into a roll with some sellotape. You need some glue or sellotape. Uh, this is one I've nicked from the church cupboard. Don't go and do that. You need either some coloured paper, and I've got some coloured paper here from the church cupboard, or better still, if you use white paper and do some colouring on it to make it look like the things, oh, it will clever. look much better than my one. <coughs> so there are some things you need to cut out of your coloured paper to make your cockerel. I think he looks a bit like Feathers McGraw, you know, in... Um, <laughs> chicken run. In chicken run. No, the wrong trousers. Oh, the wrong, wrong trousers. Oh. Yeah. So you need to cut out uh, the bit at the top that makes his comb. And you can probably see that I've cut out the shape, but then you also need to cut out two little slits so that it will sit Ooh, on... Clever on your toilet roll or whatever you're using and you'll need to kind of measure that you'll need to try and eyeball it when you put it on there so that it sits on there like that you can do the gluing because you really oh, like sticky I love stuff gluing. okay then the next bit you need yeah. is you need to make some eyes and in fact where's my pen your pen got a pen that's it you just need so you need to cut out some round bits and then you need to do some eyes on it and then you need to glue the backs of those and stick them on your toilet roll not not stick them to the table don't stick them to the table no that wasn't very good smart was it all right so get a bit of glue on or sellotape doesn't matter what you got there's one that's it and then the other one that's it so now he's got eyes, all right? Now the next shape you need to make is a diamond shape like this. And this is gonna be your beak. Now you don't wanna fold it just in half because otherwise you won't have anything to stick on. So you need to fold it mm. a top like that and then the bottom like that so that you've got a flat bit to put your glue on. Oh. All right, so put the glue on that glue bit. That. It, lots of glue 
nice and sticky and that can be a bit tricky to get it to stick up okay so now it's got its beak right now under its beak you need this kind of wobbly bit i don't know what that's bubble, called bubble. yeah that's it now you need to do this shape but you need a longer bit here because you need to fold it back so that you've got something to stick on your toilet roll so it's got a bit of a, a lip on it like that so glue that bit and stick it under the beak that's it and then when it's stuck you can fold it down oh well done it's all sticking right okay next bit feet now again you need to cut out these kind of shapes all right and you can you can color them whatever color you like mine are black but you might want to do them red or pink or whatever and you need a longer bit so that you can put some glue on that and then you can tuck it underneath Lord. inside your toilet roll okay Well, we don't make no, any old stuff at Messy Church. No, it's it's complicated. No, okay, so you I'm just your glue up. stick it in here. You might need to hold it there for a minute to make sure it really sticks. He looks a bit evil, this chicken. It's got a big mouth. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Okay, so stick your feet on and hold them there for a minute until they've absolutely stuck, and then you can fold them up. See, now it's got ah. feet. Now, it's not a cockerel if it doesn't have a really, really nice bit of plumage. So this is where... Lovely plumage. Lovely plumage. So this is where oh, you've Norwegian got to be quite... Blue. quite. <laughs> it might be a Norwegian blue. And the way you make it curly is you. this is where you use your scissors. So get your bit of paper, and you might need someone to help you with this if you're little and hold the scissors and then pull it like that and it will go curly oh and break if you do it too hard let's do this one that's it oh now that's oh, good a good one, one isn't good it one. now before you hang on don't be too oh, don't be too quick anymore. now what i suggest you do is first you stick that one to that one okay all right so we'll have a bit of glue on that glue one on that's it so you stick that one to that one and then you can stick the whole thing to the chicken behind i'll make another one. Oh, that one's gone very curly well round is round the back I think. right at the back yeah. right at the back okay it's not working it's i'll hold it on if you stick the next one it is quite tricky to get these to stick but it does work if you persevere Just hold it on for a little while. Yeah, it's stuck. And that's it. And then we need one more to make it symmetrical. I'll just do one more. Cockerel's got some lovely plumage. Look, and there he is. There's you've got two now. Look, this one's got eyebrows. Oh, yeah, you can put some eyebrows on if you want, or some mm -hmm. eyelashes. So, if you can have a go at making these at home and then um, perhaps put them on Facebook, a picture of your cockerel, uh, we'd love to see them because we love to see your craft. Normally, we're able to put it in the church and put it on the church windows and things, but if you can make an Easter cockerel and send us a picture um, or put it on on uh, Facebook that would be absolutely brilliant but make sure you get permission of your mummy or daddy or whoever looks after you at home before you put a picture of yourself on Facebook oh dear comb falling off right well we're gonna end Messy Church today with another song and it's not one you've sung before but I think you can learn it really well and it's all about being forgiven 
uh, which is what we learn from the story today in the story of Easter. I'm forgiven I am fathered by the true and living God I'm accepted No condemnation I am loved by the true and living God There's no guilt joining us at Messy Church. We're sorry we haven't been able to have supper together today but uh, one day soon we'll be able to do that again. Um, look out for details of Messy Church uh, next month. It will either be back in the church or if we're still in lockdown then it will be online again but look out for us and we'll look out for you and keep safe and stay at home. God bless. Have a wonderful Easter. <music>